Hello everyone, it's me Alicia and welcome to my Beautiful Nights channel. So in my last video I opened up a dollar bead box which is a monthly bead subscription that I'm subscribed to. And um, before I actually got the box I had an idea to make a lariat necklace that was hand knotted and at the end of the lariat I wanted chain tassels. So um, I sat down and I started playing with the beads from the dollar bead box and I did manage to come up with a nice pattern. and. I I have it strung up here. I haven't knotted it at all. I'm going to knot it with you guys. And I know that it will look different with a knot in between each bead. And I know it's also going to make it longer. So I don't know if I will need all of the beads that I have strung here. And something I do want to make clear is you do not have to use these beads to make this necklace. You can use any beads you want to make this style of necklace. You can use all the same size beads. You can all use all different sizes of beads. It's up to you. Um, if you wanted, you could do this in all six millimeter rounds or bicones. You, you could do same size, different color patterns. It's just totally up to you. But I'm, I'm basically just going to show you um, the necklace that I've created using beads from that box. And if you're subscribed to that box, you can pretty much make the same exact necklace. I tried to use most of the things from the box so your piece will look identical to mine. And some things I did use out of my stash, but I will tell you where I got them from. Here's the list of materials you will need to make a Larry. And remember, you don't have to have everything that I'm using to make this lariat. You can use stuff out of your stash and this is actually a really good stash buster project where you can use things you already have and you really don't have to go buy anything unless you don't have the basic beading supplies. So I am using a bead all and I'm using a tulip bead all. This is a fine point. This thing is awesome. I use this all the time for when I'm designing things. I use it to take things apart. It's great for picking knots. It's a must have tool. It's my best friend. I'm also using super long cord. This is size 18. I'm using 8 millimeter bicones. I'm using 6 millimeter round beads. I'm using the 5 by 6 millimeter cathedral beads. I'm using 12 by 16 millimeter voodoo skull beads. I'm using 12 millimeter turban beads. I'm using 4mm check fire polish beads, which are the silver lined AB ones, the clear ones here. And I'm using 3mm check fire polish beads in white and black. And I am using cones. These cones here are beautiful. I got them from Walmart, and they are actually Blue Moon name brand and they're really good quality. I just adore them. And they were very affordable. And again, Walmart, everybody can go get those. You're also going to need wire and I think 20 gauge wire would probably be best for this but I don't have any 20 gauge um, anti-tarnish wire on hand so I'm actually using 24 gauge but because of how I wrapped this here it's actually really strong and sturdy and I'll show you um, how to do that if you're like me and you don't have the bigger gauge on hand. I'm also using head bins, and I'm actually using head bins that I got from a previous dollar bead box. So if you're subscribed to the box, you probably have the same exact ones. And I'm using Rolo Chain. This here I just got from a necklace that I took apart. And you can probably also get that at Walmart. I'm also using charms. I really love the cat charm, this little guy here, that came in the dollar bead box. So I'm using him on my... Um, tassel and I only have one of him so I'm going to use this one on this tassel and on my other tassel I'm going to use this cute little key and I, I want to say this key is also from another previous dollar bead box and I'm also using 80 C beads in a hematite color and I'm using clamshell tips and a lighter and I'm also using clear nail polish to seal my knots I may or may not use that there so um, this is a list of materials, and remember, you guys don't have to have all of this stuff to make this. You can use what you have on hand. I'm just trying to give you inspiration uh, for a really neat design. So I'm just going to show you my pattern real quick. So these are the voodoo beads. They came in the box. They're really darn cute. I love them so much and um, I used several things from the box and I have little sections here of my pattern that I've came up with. So I'm going to zoom in some so you could see. 
So these are the 8 millimeter bicones, and I have in between them 8 o seed beads. I tried to use 6 o seed beads, but they were too large because when I tied a knot, my 6 o's just slid right over the knot, no problem. So here's a little section of the pattern. So I start out with my voodoo bead, my 8 millimeter bicones, 8 o seed beads, and then I have this little pattern here of the white and black. I really wanted to stay with white and black, this aqua blue and a hematite color. I really like that, and silver. So there's another pattern, and then here is another pattern that I have, okay? And then I repeated this uh, white and black section here. So this here is breaking up these two patterns. So this is my pattern. Now keep in mind that when you put a knot in between all of these beads, this pattern will look different. It's going to be a lot more stretched out. So I'm working on the spool. I decided that I'm not going to cut a length of cord. I'm going to work directly off the spool because this way, as I'm tying knots on this side, I'm not losing any beads off the other side. And also, I'm not wasting any cord. And if I, you know, cut a piece and I'm knotting going to town, maybe I don't have enough cord. So it's nice to be able to do it straight off of the spool. So I laid my lariat down here so you guys can follow the pattern if you're using the dollar bead box and if you want to have the same pattern or not. And I started by picking up the skull bead and the round 6 millimeter trucks. I did that pattern there. And then I did the white and black pattern with the fire polish and then the bar cones. And then the white and black and then I repeated this here. Now I'm going to start tying my knots over here and I'm going to be working in this direction. So. I don't know, depending how long the necklace gets, I will have to try it on. Um, I do want it to be long. I would actually like to be able to tie the two ends in a knot. So, um, I don't know, I'll see how it goes. But um, depending, I might have to leave this section off. And I would just trim my thread and put my skull here. Or I might even have to lose that many beads. I don't know, I'm going to see how it goes. So I just wanted to point that out to you guys. And also, I did use a bead palette design board to do this. Here's my board. Um, I put it in the biggest groove going all the way around and laid out my pattern. So now I'm going to show you how to start this. So I am using clamshell tips. These have been around forever. You can also get these at Walmart. And I'm just going to put this onto my cord. Slide that down. And I'm going to tie a knot. And I'm going to go just like this over and under one time and two times. Okay? And I'm going to slide this knot up. And this makes a pretty uh, good size knot. So there it is, as you can see. So go ahead, pull that tight. Now I'm going to slide my clamshell up to check. And it's good, it does not slide over the knot. And also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and um, cut this a little bit shorter, eyeball it, about half an inch. And I'm going to get my lighter, which is very fun to do. And be careful, one time I, I didn't do it on camera, it was the night before I filmed, I was going to burn the end of my cord. And my nails were really long at the time. So I'm holding it like this, burning it real close. And um... I blew the flame out on this and I look and my fingernail, the tip of my fingernail was on fire. And I didn't feel any heat from it because my nail was so long at the time, but that scared the crap out of me. <laughs> it was like a human candle finger. It was crazy. So anyways, sorry about all the blabbing. I'm going to burn this and I'm going to let it go pretty close to the knot. Ah, went out. I'll do it again. Let it go out, and then I'm just going to mold that. You would think that it would be like really hot, but it's actually not that bad. So now I have this nice big knot, and then I, that melted piece there that went down. So now I'm just going to slide my clamshell shell tip all the way down, just like that. And then I'm going to close this. First I like to do it with my fingers if I can. And then I come in with my um, pliers. I have some nylon gels here so I don't mar the 
clamshell tip, but you can also just do chain nose pliers. Okay, so now I have that closed up. So I will be putting my um, tassel that I made on this here when I go to finish my necklace off. Okay, so I'll be doing that later. But for now, if I did put that put on now, it's going to be in the way. So now we're going to start tying knots, and I'm just going to clean up my area here. So now for the knots, I'm just going to make an overhand knot, just like this. Pull the bead through, put my awl in this hole. And because of how my awl is shaped, I can slowly pull this knot down and pull my cord tight at the same time. And then, voila, I got my first knot there. And then I slide my next bead down. Okay, I do the same thing. Overhand knot, just like this. Put my hand in the knot, my all in the knot, and slide that down, just like this. Pulling it tight, as you pull the knot down, there's my next knot. And the thing I really love about this is I'm not going to lose any beads right now at this point. So I can lay in bed, sit on the couch. I can go do this project anywhere it's because of that. So again, overhand knot. Pull my beads through. Get my awl. Slide it into the knot. There's actually a fancy beadalon knotting tool that you can get to do this, but you don't need it. You really don't. There's another knot. Slide another bead down. Just don't forget to slide a bead down, because I'm thinking I'm uh, I'm probably gonna forget to do it, and then I'll have to pick knots, because that's just how things work for me. Okay, sliding the knot down. Just like that. There's another knot. I need another bead. Slide that bead down. my overhand knot, grab my awl, and everybody has their own way of doing hand knotting by the way. Everyone has their own little method of how to make it faster. Everyone has their little techniques that they do. It's pretty cool. If you go online and you watch other videos, pearl knotting, it's incredible the different ways people can do this. Some people could do it really fast because they've done it a lot so um if this is a something you like doing and you do it a lot you can get really fast at doing it so that's what mine looks like so far I'm gonna slide another bicone down again tie another overhand knot put my all in here pull the cord tight as I slide it down the all and there we go it looks good. So this is pretty simple as you can see. I really want to see what it's going to be like with the small three millimeter beads. I can see what it's like with the eights. And this will probably work with 11 OC beads if you wanted to use those in the gaps. So here is a three millimeter check fire polish. Decided to see what that's gonna be like. It's so tiny. Pull it tight. Pull the cord tight with the left hand and then right here with your all you're sliding this down, pulling that knot tight. And there we go looks pretty good so I'm gonna keep on doing this tying my knots and I'll be back in a bit and show you guys what to do when we get to the other end it's pretty cute so I'm not the length that I want my lariat to be, and I didn't use all of my beads. I did take some off, as you can see right there, and I do want this to be a long lariat for myself, but if you don't want yours to be long, of course, you know, adjust it to any length you want. But um, I do 
want to tie both of these ends together in a big knot and doing that is going to make the necklace shorter so I have to keep that in mind. So I'm going to show you how to finish this off now. So I have my last knot right there at the 80 seed bead. I'm sliding down my voodoo bead and I put on my clamshell tip and now I'm going to tie a knot here. Now I'd, I don't have a knot after the voodoo bead because doing that will cause um, the necklace to break right here. It will rub against the metal. So I'm going to take and zoom in so I have to adjust my camera for you guys. Okay, I'm going to tie an overhand knot just like this Okay, and then with my other hand, I'm going to take my tweezers and I'm going to come in here. I'm coming in through this loop in the knot and I'm grabbing the thread that's right here inside the clamshell tip. Okay, holding on to that thread. I'm trying to get a grip on it. Okay, as close as you can. I'm going to slide the knot down some, but not all the way. Okay just like this. I need my knot to land perfectly in that spot and it's kind of tricky to do and that's what the tweezers are for. So I'm sliding this down, closing it up but not closing it all the way. I still have a little hole there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the end of my cord and I did take a lighter to this and um, hardened the end so it didn't fray. And if you want, you can take your awl and come in here and open it up just a little bit. Okay, I'm passing my cord through that loop a second time. Just like we did at the beginning. At the beginning of this necklace, I made a double knot. So I'm still holding the cord with my um, tweezers and I'm pulling this knot down. Okay, now I'm going to let go and carefully slide this knot down and pull this cord just like that. Okay, now let's see. It's perfect. It could not have gone any better. Okay, and I forgot to put tweezers on my materialist, so I have to do that. But that turned out really great. Okay, now I'm going to do what I did earlier. Okay, I'm going to cut my cord again. Like I said, you want about a half inch tail. And then get your lighter and come in here and you're going to ball this up and it's going to get tucked inside of your clamshell. Blow it out push down on it. Alrighty. Perfect. Okay, now I need to close this up. Chain nose. Straighten that out a little bit. It's a little crooked, my clamshell tip. Okay. And just gently close that up. Okay, there it is. So now I'm going to show you how to make the tassel, which is pretty easy to do. So you guys can make your tassels however you want. And I already have a few videos showing how to make some different kinds of tassels. I've done a tassel made out of seed beads, and I did another one where I made it out of embroidery floss, and I also did leather and yarn, and I used so many different kinds of cording to make them but there's just so many different ways to make a tassel if you guys didn't see those two videos I will put them down there in the description bar so you can go check them out but those tassels will also work for this lariat they would look really cool so this tassel that I'm going to show you is a chain tassel and instead of doing where all the chain are the same length like you know tassels normally are I wanted this one to be graduated I wanted it to be um, longer up to shorter pieces and I also wanted to put a charm in it which you normally don't see on tassels so what I did and I kind of did this backwards I'm going to tell you how I did it and then I'm going to tell you how you should probably do it so I took my bead cone right here as you could see and this is the one here that's completed I'll move that out of the way I took a bead cone okay and I went like this with a piece of chain I'm like hmm I like that length right there so then I opened up the link 
and then I put my turban bead on, my check turban bead. Now, these links here are incredibly easy to make. I've already done these a few times. It's just a wire loop right there on a head pin. So I have my little piece of chain, okay, that I opened up, and I put my bead on it, and then I put this onto my awl, because now I have to figure out what length do I need my next chain to be. So then I went back to my chain, and I put it onto my awl, just like this. Okay, so I'm holding it like this, and I can see where the length needs to be for my next chain. So I got my next bead, which is the next biggest bead. So this one's the biggest, and this one's just a little bit smaller. And I went like this, and I could see, if you get it to hang just right, that I need to take, I think it was two links out for it to be just right. So I did that, and then I ended up with my next chain. So now when I put them side by side, you could see how it's graduated. One's just a little bit longer than the other. So then I did it again. I put my long chain back on. Okay. And I figured this was my next bead, this black one here. I figured, oh, I need to put it about there. So then I opened that link and I put my little bead on the head pin on, just like that, and then, guess what, I did it again. I put the chain back on there and I saw where the next one needed to be. So then here is my fourth one. Now I was going to do a fifth bead, but I really don't know what else to do other than to check fire polish. And by the way, these are all the leftover beads that I have. I use a lot of beads for this lariat, but it turned out beautifully. I'm very happy with it. So um, instead of doing a bead, I thought, why don't I just do a charm? So that's when the cat charm came in. I really loved that cat charm. It reminded me of my own cat because it's a very skinny cat, and that's what my cat looks like. So I did that, and um, I realized I'm going to have to do two tassels, and I would like to have a different charm on the other side. And so I found this key in my stash, and I believe this is from a previous dollar bead box. And so um, I put the key up there, just like this, and I could see how long I needed those links to be. And I did three on this because I figured that two links were probably going to be too short because it has to fit up inside of my bead cap. So this is how I did it. But how you should probably do it is you should start with the shortest piece first. And by the way, what I did is I took an eye pin and I opened it up. I put <clears throat> my chain on it and then I slid my cap down to see how far I needed this to be. So this charm is the same length as my cat charm, believe it or not, and um, it worked out pretty good. So you're probably going to want to start with the shortest one first and go to the longest one and not do what I did because you might have to do a lot of adjusting, but I don't know. It turned out good for me. It might turn out good for you. Okay, so let's put this together. So I cut a piece of wire here. I did not measure this. I'm just kind of winging it. And I'm going to make a wrapped loop. Okay, don't have to be anything fancy. But you do kind of want to have a big opening like this. Put the chain on. I'm going to do the longest links first to the shortest. Let that all come on down. Okay. Just like that. And then... I'm going to make a wrap loop. And I can close this up now because I can see how big it actually needs to be. So I'm going to take my chain nose, close it up a little bit, and make a wrap loop. Now this does not have to be a fancy loop because it's going to be inside a fancy wrap is what I meant to say. It's going to be inside of the bead cap or cone. Nobody's going to see it. Nobody can't possibly see it unless they cut the top of your tassel off. And if you want you don't even have to cut this tail off. But I'm going to do it so I don't get poked. But yeah, you don't have to really cut that off. Because it's all going to be tucked inside. So then you put your cone on. 
And if you have a cone like mine where the hole is kind of large, you will want to put a bead on top. So I'm doing a three millimeter to fit in there. If you have even a larger hole, you might have to do a four millimeter or a six, depending on how big your hole is on the top. I have some cones that have some pretty large holes, so you might need to uh, use a large bead to fill it. So I'm just going to make sure that my tassel looks pretty because sometimes it looks, I don't know, strange. doesn't look good. I think it looks fine. Okay, now I'm going to make my wrap loop. So that's very easy to do. I'm just going to take my chain nose pliers, hold it like this, slide this down as far as it will go, bend it like that. Okay put these down. I'm going to come in here and make my wrapped loop. Now, because I'm using such fine gauge wire, 24 gauge, I don't have 20 on hand. I have to do something a little extra, you know, because of that. So, on this one here, I actually did two loops, which made this a lot more stronger. So, I'm going to grab it like this now and make a second loop. Okay, coming around, I have to adjust my pliers. So now you can see I have my second loop. Just like that. So now I'm going to hold this and be careful as I wrap this not to get those loops out of shape. And I'm just going to wrap my wire around. Now I did a messy wrap on the top of this because I'm using thin gauge wire and I felt that because I put so much wire around the top right here, it actually looks really nice, it made this more sturdy right here, it made it stronger. This is kind of hugging that bead on the top. So I'm just going to make a messy loop, overlapping that there and I'm probably gonna have to oops go to these now so it will look um tight a tight messy loop that's what I like okay so I just want it to look similar to my other one and I think it's looking pretty good I'll go around one more time. I got the wrong pliers. Right there. And I'll cut it. Okay, and then I'll just tuck that in. So, but you guys pretty much got what I was doing there. So now I have both of my tassels made and I'm ready to attach them to my lariat. So I'm just going to put my tassel here on and close it with my round nose pliers. Just like that I tuck it in, curl it in, and I do the same on this one over here. Gently curl it in. Just like that and we're all done so now I'm going to show you how I want to wear this um, I wish that I could have had this long enough to where I could have wrapped it around my neck twice and then tie it and not here but it's kind of too short just a little too short if I had some more beads I probably could have done it so I'm going to tie a knot so I'm going to go like this because I don't want them to be the same exact length. And I'm going to grab it just like this and do an overhand knot. Pull my tassels through there. Get this knot to be in the right place. Just like that. This is how I plan on wearing it. Okay. And this makes it shorter because that's a big knot. And if you wanted it to be even shorter, you probably could tie another one. I don't know. It depends on how long your necklace is. So, 
there's two knots and that's pretty big there so I'm gonna untie this and show you another way to wear it another way to wear this is to just go over and under just like this and because of the knots that we did it does kind of stay in place just like this but if you want it to be more secure then you would tie that big knot that I showed you so there's a few different ways to wear and I am wondering if this is long enough I have to try it on I haven't tried it on yet if this is long enough to go around my neck like this with the ends through it like this ooh I think it might be I'll have to try it on and see so this is another way it could be worn if you have it the right length it's pretty neat so there's several different ways to wear I've showed this is my second lariat lariat video by the way and I'm going to put a link for the first one that I did down there in the description bar so you guys can check that out so I hope that you guys enjoyed this I hope that you found this inspirational I felt like there was a lot of good ideas that I shared in this video thank you so much for watching please like this video leave me a comment subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and don't forget to hit the bell button when you subscribe so you can get to see all of my videos that I upload and like me on Facebook. And don't forget to share pictures of the jewelry we've made from my videos on my Facebook page and follow me on Pinterest. Thanks for watching!